Well, hello, 1P, and welcome to Curves of Best Fit. Um, our goal today, I know what a graph looks like when a curve of best fit is more appropriate than a line of best fit. So let's have a look here. Curve of best fit. Uh, not all data that you find will give you a linear pattern. If the data is quite obviously not a line, it is inappropriate to fit a line to it. Instead, you should use a curve of best fit. And I'm going to show you a bunch of data here. We're going to talk about whether we should use a line of best fit or a curve of best fit. Um, now, taking a look at this one, <clears throat> there is most definitely a pattern here. And it looks like it goes up and it comes back down again. And so this is one of those instances where a curve of best fit is more appropriate. And when you put on a curve of best fit, you just try to best approximate the data in a curve. Okay. Um, so a lot of times when you will see things like that where it goes up and comes back down again, especially uh, if you take a look at what the subject of this is, the path of an arrow, any kind of projectile does not follow a linear pattern because it has to go up and come back down again and it doesn't go straight up and straight down in a linear pattern. Now taking a look here, population of a caribou herd. Population of a caribou herd, it's not linear either. If you have a look, it goes up on a curve. Now we could have fit a line of best fit to it. We could have put a line through it, kind of like that, or maybe even move it over a little bit more so that I have a few on one side and a few on the other side. We could put a line of best fit on it, um, but it doesn't look like a line. If you take a look at it, it's not linear. It, it's it's really a curve. Um, so putting a line on it is just not appropriate. And this one is a really strong relationship. It's really tight um, following that curve. And the same with this one, growth of a sunflower. It grows up and then it tapers off again. So it's not really a line either. It's a curve. Now, once again, we could have fit a line to that. But if we take a look at it, when we put a line to that, we see that in spots, um, it, it, they're not scattered. Sometimes it's, I've got a few below, and I've got a few above, and then I've got a few below again. So it's not appropriate to fit that. Okay, so this looks like a sunflower. Starts off growing fairly slowly, and then it speeds up a fair bit, and then it tapers off when it gets tall. Um, 250 centimeters tall, that is. Um, and it'll stay there for the remainder of its life. And so it makes sense that it's not going to keep growing and growing and growing forever. So it has to taper off at some point. And so that gives us this uh, kind of an S-curve of best fit. Now let's look at a few other things that are sort of scattered and see whether we can decide whether it's a line or a curve. Um, this does, we have no idea what's going on in this uh, information, but it definitely does not look like a line. It looks like a curve. Now this one here kind of looks like a line to me. Um, it, it's really not a strong relationship. I would say it's pretty weak. Um, and we could think that maybe it's a curve. Maybe it goes like that. Okay, um, But it's so weak that we can't really make that judgment because it could be a line that goes like that as well. Um, although having these ones over here and then this one over here sort of makes you think that it's not scattered, that there is another kind of a pattern to it, but it looks more linear to me than anything. <clears throat> now this one here is more scattered and it's not a particularly strong relationship, but you notice that it is definitely curved. It definitely goes up in the middle and comes back down again. So to try and fit a line on this information just would not work. Like how do I put it? Do I put it up? Do I put it down? Do I put it straight? Um, it's just impossible to figure that out and that's because that would not be appropriate. We need to put a curve through the data. And now over here, <clears throat> there's already a line and a curve on here. This one looks linear. That's why um, when it looks linear, it's got, you know, go up and down over top of the line of best fit. And this one here, someone has fit a line of best fit onto it. That does not look linear to me. That looks like we need to put a curve kind of like that on it. Okay, it doesn't go through all of them, but we just try to put it through the best that we can. Okay, let's take a look. We got a couple more here. Uh, so what do you think? 
line or curve? Uh, could I put a line on it like that? I hope that doesn't make any sense to you because it doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, a line like that makes even less sense. Okay, this looks like a curve, just like that. And then this one over here, we've got a, a bunch of dip de doos going on here. So we'll go kind of like that. Looks like what's going on there. So we have some above, some below, and it definitely looks like it's following a curve. Now, notice you don't just play connect the dots. Draw the smoothest curve possible in the pattern it implies. If you can play connect the dots to get a smooth curve, it is a perfect relationship. The closer the dots are to your line, the stronger the relationship. And what I mean by if you can play connect the dots, let's go back over here. I could really kind of play connect the dots here. I could have just drawn a smooth curve through all of those points. Uh, same thing here or here. It looks like we've got a perfect linear relationship, even here. Okay, um, This definitely, we can't play connect the dots. So if you can play connect the dots, it's a perfect relationship. Very, very strong. Okay. So now here's another one. Graph the following information and draw on a curve of best fit. So we're going to look at the months of the year versus the number of daylight hours there are. So the months of the year, and this would be January and February and March and April, etc., etc. Okay, um, we're going to put them on here and then we're going to graph these points. Now I'm going to pause this and put them on. Um, and you can see, uh, and you can do the same thing. Actually, maybe we should talk about the scale first. Uh, we need to fit 12 across here and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So not enough to put every two spaces. So we're going to have this be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, right, so this one's 12 here. Notice I was only going every other, um, I, I'm only writing every other space. That's just to keep... Uh, so that it doesn't look really squished in there. And now going up the side, the smallest amount of daylight hours is 9, and the biggest amount of daylight hours it looks like is 15.4. So I need to get from 9 to 15.4, and I've got a lot of space up here. Um, so first of all, I'm going to say I'm not going to start it at 1. I'm going to put that little jump there, and I'm going to let this be 9.0. And I need to get to 15. So how many spaces do I have here? Should I go 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15? That's pretty low. I can probably do every two. So that would be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I probably don't have enough to do every three, so every two is probably good. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That was a little bit slow going up there, but you can see it there. And now we're going to graph these. I'm going to graph the first one. Um, month one. 9 hours of daylight. Let's see how long it takes that dot to come up there. There we go. There's our dot. Uh, month 2, 9.9. .9. So not quite 10. So right about there. We'll see how long that dot. Oh, not as long. Okay. Now I'm going to put it on pause and finish graphing these and I want you to do the same thing. So there we go. Here's what it looks like. Now I'm going to join these points. I'm going to use a slightly different color. So it looks like it goes kind of like that. And then it's starting to curve back around. And so there is our curve of best fit. Now there's some information that um, that your textbook asked you. This is, this is a question from your textbook. And so we've done this together, but I would like you to go and actually work on that uh, question. Here's the questions from your textbook. Um, this question, you'll find the questions to deal with this on page 162. 162 number 2 
And then when you're done dealing with the questions from this, I want you to do number three, four, and five. And that brings us to the end of this video.